Good morning. It's that time of day where I am in the kitchen and it's time for a cat chat. This isn't bitching in the kitchen. I have been known to do that. Also cook up a really good dish, but this is it. The theme is conversation and learning the art of conversation. When you're in a narcissistic relationship, that's impossible. But you can become the narc abuse escapee in your own mind. Now, I am physically a narc abuse escapee. And that means I am no contact with uh, the ex-narcissist of 10 years. And I am a now recovering adult child from a pathologically narcissistic mother who mind effed me and conditioned me and groomed me to be basically a narc bait magnet. So I was conditioned to give and give and give. I was conditioned to compromise and compromise and compromise. Relationships means compromising, right? Well, wrong. I was always doing the compromising. So when I was the only one unhappy constantly and the partner was always like, well, it's your problem. You go talk to the shrink. I haven't got a problem. Then it became quite evident to me that I was not part of the problem. And when I left the relationship, my life became better. I am not suggesting this for all people. It is not practical for all people unless you're being terribly abused and terribly misused or slowly poisoned by arsenic or something. So let's just talk about the art of conversation and what a conversation actually is. What is effective communication, everybody? Well, how does it begin? You're going to begin with your own greeting in the mirror to yourself. And you basically greet yourself with a sunny hello. Yes, hello self, how are you doing today? And you look at yourself in that mirror and you can look at yourself in the eyes. The right eye has a different meaning than a left eye. I tend to look into another person's uh, right eye when I speak. No, do I? Let's see, so if they're facing me, I look at that one. No, I look at, okay, I don't know. I look at both of them intermittently. One's supposed to be into the soul more and one of them is supposed to be how to bend, bend them to your will, <laughs> which is what narcissists do to their children by both the gaze, they use the gaze. My mother, uh, Ombo, almighty big one. So Ombo, the pathological narcissistic mother I had, who I didn't discover that she was this bad until 2022. The brain goes into trauma amnesia. And we're gonna talk about the brain too. And I'm gonna say it right now. When you stop actually trying to have a sane conversation with your narc partner or the narc in your life that you can't avoid, when you actually stop expecting it to be a give and take, when you actually realized that it is a futile endeavor because they're banking on you always being the dupe. It's what their whole entire life is based on, being superior to you. So when you stop that futility, you will suddenly discover, well, it may take a little bit of time, your th clearer thinking, you can recall more, you remember more, and what's more is there's more of you for you. There's more of you to enjoy your life. There's more of you to enjoy of your life. With or without that effort in it. And I do not like these types. And it's not normal. And it's not going to be normalized. And if I could wish one thing without any uh, karmic ramifications, I would wish that all the nurse would find each other and die off. Just stop procreating because they're just awful people and die off. But instead, because we're in the end times, 
now we're in the worst of it in America, the United States that is, we're in the worst of it. Can it get any worse? It is. Uh, that people who are narcissists will breed narcissists. Well, hopefully uh, they won't be able to damage their kids or their kids will become, I, I, okay, I'm not going to karmically indebt myself to that curse. But what I am going to say is I wouldn't shed a tear if every last narcissist on the planet suddenly just poof, disappeared. But it won't happen because we're in the end times, which means the demon is trying its very best to infiltrate and influence as many people as possible. And narcissists, guess what? Are very easily influenced. And they're not that bright. They fooled you into thinking they were. They just have a good game. They're bluffers. They're bluffers. That's all they are. Big effing bluffers. So, the art of conversation begins with yourself. It's how you greet yourself in the morning. It's how you greet yourself. It's how you would greet a, a happy kitten or a puppy or a dog that you love or a child. That's how you greet yourself. What else is in a conversation, everybody? Listening. My ombo never listened to me. Ombo is oh mighty big one. I will not call her mother because at her age of crazy 88 and getting more and more senile by the second and 3,300 miles away, thankfully, by design, I uh, am um, able to completely limit my exposure to the narcissistic abuse I received on the daily. And therefore, I have exponentially over the years since my escape from that one in Virginia, my guy, my guy, my guy, yeah, the big galoot, the big dumb galoot, who is now, ooh, 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 he's got DTs. I left and his alcoholism went on to a high new low. <laughs> you don't have a conversation with these people. They can't have a conversation. They talk at you. They never talk to you. So you talk to you. You listen to you. You look at yourself in the mirror or you spend time listening to what you have to say. And stop reacting and responding to their dim-wittedness. They're all ombos. I don't have an ex. I have ombos in my past. All of them. Oh, mighty big ones. And when you think of them as that, you can see them as the real dolts that they really are. There aren't that many uh, <laughs> brain cells firing away in the intelligence department. They've absolutely none in the empathy department and absolutely none in the compassion department unless it's to their advantage and makes them look good to others. Then they'll exercise compassion so that other people can see it. Yeah. I do not like these individuals. I do not think that they deserve a place in this society. And therefore, my society has excluded them and my life has become better and better and better and better and better. And I know how to deal with them. And it's with a big dose of humor and a large helping of I don't give a crap about you. Yeah, it's great. It's so freeing especially when you see one trying to be mean to you and it does water on the duck's back, baby. I've been abused well past anything anybody can do. No being has the capacity to ever measure up to the cruelty I've experienced at the hands of somebody who loves me. So it feels so good for this chick to be free, to be 100% free and learning how to have the dignity of learning to listen to myself and learning to have positive self-talk. Cheers to that. This is coffee in a Christmas mug, because I like it. Yeah, I like it. 
and um, I think we're going to stop there. This was your little morning pep talk for you to get rolling and learn that you can think of that person in your mind any way you want. The narc is an ombo. They're bluffers. They're full of hot air. And if you don't respond, do the gray rock method. If you don't respond, you will discover your clarity of mind will increase because you're no longer reacting and responding to lunacy. And not only lunacy, to manipulative uh, machinations of a malevolent, a malevolent person who is easily influenced by the demons who have increased on the planet in their number because they want to come through and they want to come through people who are brain dead and ombos are almost there. <laughs> so cheers to living your best life, everybody. And ho, 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 life is wonderful. Live your best light. I'm rooting for you. Now I'm about to go live mine. More later. Mwah.